three, has a northerly wind uh, blowing incredibly hot, uh, reaching out of the diamond area of South Africa through to Alex and onto Namibia and uh, down the Orange River and hopefully to the place that we've done the spot. With the city far behind us, we started to feel a real sense of adventure. There was not one visible sign of civilization from horizon to horizon. We felt incredibly free, able to go and explore anywhere we wanted. The temperature inversion along with the northerly headwind was so strong that we had to fly about 30 to 40 feet to stay under it. Due to the early morning mist and the runway almost being the same colour as the ground, we found it difficult to see Alexander Bay. The air traffic controller was really friendly and routed us directly in and allowed us to land simultaneously. We cleared customs on the South African side before the short flight to Aranyamont to clear the Namibian side. We cleared South African customs and as we go over the Orange River we'll be entering Namibia. Have heard them and we'd prefer to land straight in runway 20 at uh, Oranimont if that is alright with you. Maybe 240 you can route for the straight in runway 20 approach, no problem. Break, break, Bravo, Yankee, Oscar, can you report vacating the runway at Oranjamund? On short finals, I report vacating. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, the EMA 240 will call again 5 miles finals at uh, Oranjamund. EMA 240. We've finished with all the bureaucracy, thank goodness for that. Really friendly customs officials here in Oranjamund. Not five miles to the north of the river, and already you can see why they call it the Nama Desert. Suddenly I heard a very loud electrical noise through my headset, with fuzzy lines all over my camera monitor, and my radio and GPS were dead. I thought that the camera equipment had definitely blown, ending the filming portion of our trip. Then I started thinking about flying over the Namibian desert, with no radio or GPS. I looked for somewhere to land to try and resolve the problem. After blowing more fuses and not getting any closer to sorting it out, I took off in search of Tiet. He was waiting for me just a little further down the river, and I landed and we secured the trikes. It was so hot that we decided to head to the river for a swim and a much needed bath and to look at my electrical problems later. Yeah, see, doesn't look like such a great spot. This wasn't in the brochure. I think it's just some muddy there. What are you saying? Are you stuck? I'm stuck, I've lost my bloody shoe, hold on. Uh, wait, that's not it. I really have lost the two. Yes. <laughs> We're supposed to come down here to get clean. Oh. Oh, it's nice. Woo! I tell you, this water has changed my whole mood. I just feel like a million bucks. <laughs> I tell you, it's actually 
Hell of a nice after so hot at 40 degrees to come in here, even with the mud. The water's maybe 5 degrees, it's amazingly cold. Jeff thinks he's going to do it without getting his feet muddy. Because at this resort and spa, which they also didn't put in the brochure, you get free mud therapy. But we thought we'd just try it up to our knees first. Mr. Bean, uh. you're not going to get up here without. What? Falling face first into the mud. There is no way. Maybe he's going to do it, that bastard. What is it about no way? No sooner had we got back to camp when a strong, hot, dry wind came out of the desert and we had to use everything and anything that we could find to tie down the tracks. Regardless of the wind, it was fantastic to be out in the open African felt under a starry nighttime sky. <laughs> 